Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Interesting passage of scripture here tonight in Joshua chapter 9, starting in verse 3. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua, what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they worked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors. And they took old sacks on their donkeys, old white skins torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. Why'd they do that? You keep reading in the chapter, they did that to appear as a faraway nation. Remember, Joshua and the Israelites were commanded to wipe out everyone in the promised land. The promised land was their land, and they were to destroy all the inhabitants of the land, all the Canaanites and all the other mites. Just period, the ites. So the Gibeonites decided we need to fool them, we need to trick them. Let's pretend we're from someplace far away. Hopping down to the end of verse 7, oh, I'm sorry, the end of verse 6, we have come from a far country, now therefore make a covenant with us. Hop over to verse 14, and the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And when it came to pass, they found out that those people were not who they said they were. They had to let them live because they swore an oath. We swear by the Lord our God we will let you live. And it's not. And back then, you swear an oath, you can't break it or else God's wrath will come upon you for breaking your word. So they ended up right there before the book of Judges and them letting people live that they shouldn't let live by, letting, by not fully conquering the land right here. They already messed up. You go down to verse 17. Their cities were Gibeon, Chephirah, Biroth, and Kirjath Jerim. Four enemies... Four enemies were allowed to live because of that one covenant. And they made peace with enemies of the Lord that were meant for destruction. And when you make peace with what God calls his enemy, when you make peace with wickedness, it's going to drag you down. It's going to be bad. They went and made them slaves, woodcutters and servants of the altar of the Lord. And they put that in those those cities in bondage. But those people should have been killed. I'm setting aside the issue of, you know, oh my gosh, wiping out the entire inhabitants of the land. That's terrible. I'm setting aside that issue for now. That's not the main point of this video. The point is when you make peace with something God has destined to destruction, you don't destroy it the way he wants you to, it will tear you down. It will be bad for you. And like I covered in the main sermon last Sunday, nowadays, as Christians, our battle is not in the physical. Our weapons are not in the physical. They're in the, they're in the minds and the hearts and the ideas, philosophies, ideologies of men. That's where the fight is now. That's where the enemies are now. And you do not make peace with what God has called to be destroyed. You don't do it. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you guys. God bless.